Okay, in the last video, we had a look at how to build what you can see on the screen right now. A very simple sort of interface using Streamlit. Now, what we want to do in this video is go through how we actually build the sort of smart part behind the open domain Q&A system that we're going to put together here. So, I said before, there are a few components to open the main Q&A. We're going to stick the first two for now. So the vector database, which we're going to use Pinecone for, and the retriever model, which we are going to download from Hugging Face Model Hub, and we're going to use the sentence transformers library uh, to actually implement that. Now, the first thing we are going to want to do is create our uh, vector database, or our index. Now, to do that, there are uh, three parts or three steps we need to take. First, we need to download our data. We're going to be using the uh, squad data set from Hugging Face data sets. Then we want to encode those vectors, um, encode those paragraphs or what we call context into context vectors. And we use sentence transformers uh, and a retriever model for that. And then the next part is uploading or pushing all of those vectors into our Pinecone vector database. So to do all of that, we're just going to very quickly go through that code because it is a lot and I don't want to focus on it too much. So here we have a script. I'm going to maybe zoom out a little bit so you can see. Um, so the first thing we do is import everything. Uh, you don't need TQDM here, but you can pip install TQDM if you do want to use that. Um, so we are from data sets. So this is hugging face data sets. You, you will need to install this. So that is just a pip install data sets. We're going to first initialize our retriever model. So we're using the Pinecone MPNet Retriever Squad 2 um, Retriever model. So this is a retriever model that is based on the MPNet model from Microsoft, and it's been trained on the Squad 2 dataset. And first thing we need to do is initialize our connection to uh, Pinecone. So this is where we're going to um, store all of our vectors. Now, to do that, you do need an API key. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't write it in your code, but I'm going to just do that uh, for the sake of simplicity here. So I'm going to go to this app.pinecone.io, and this is free right away. You don't have to pay anything. Um, so we just go to app.pinecone.io, um, and then you will have to sign up. So you create an account. I already have one, so I don't need to, to worry about that. And I have this default API key over here, like I could use that. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna use that. So we can see the key if we want. We wanna zoom in a little bit, okay, it's, it's a little bit bigger. Um, so we can see that and we can see the value there. We can just copy it or we just press over here and copy that across. And then I'm just going to paste it in here. Okay, now this script, by the way, I will we'll leave a link to this in the description so you can just download it instead of writing it all out. Because um, this isn't essential to our app, it's just how we build our, or we encode all of our context and actually store them in our, in our vector database. So we have that, we have the cloud environment that we're using there. Switch this back to the, the app. Um, we want to check if the index already exists. So I'm going to create this QA index. Now, actually, you can see in mind I already have it because I've run this code already. Uh, so QA index um, already exists. So it's not going to create a new index. And instead, it's just going to connect that index here. Right? So we've just connected, we've, or we've created our, our index, our vector database index. And now what I want to do is I'm going to switch back to our data and I'm going to run through that. So I'm going to load the data set, which is going to do squad data set uh, from Hugging Face. 
Now, the I'm going to use a validation split because the model has been trained on the training data for squad. Um, I want to make it at least a little bit hard. So we're going to use a validation split that it hasn't seen before. I'm removing any unique um, or, or duplicate uh, context in there. So can we zoom out a little bit here. Um, squad def, we're using this filter. So this is all uh, hugging face data sets so syntax here. Uh, and then we're encoding it. So this model.encode, so this is our sentence transformer, we're encoding it to create a load of uh, sentence vectors for our context. And we're converting these to lists because we are going to be pushing these uh, through an API request uh, to Pinecone. Again, we need a list, not a NumPy array, otherwise you're going to, get, going to get an error. Okay, then back to the Pinecone side of things, we want to create a list of uh, it's basically a list of tuples, and those tuples include the ID um, of each context. So there's a unique ID for each context. Uh, we want the, the vector or the encoding, uh, the context vector. And then we also have this uh, dictionary here. Now this is metadata. So metadata in Pinecone is like any other information about your vectors that you want to include. And this is really good if you want to use metadata filtering, which is super um, powerful in Pinecone, so, and I definitely want to, you know, leave that option open later on. I'm not sure if we'll use it or not, uh, but we'll probably put something in there just so we can play around with it. Now, that creates the format that we need to upset everything, which means just like push or upload everything to Pinecone. Uh, so then I do that in, in chunks of 50 at a time. It just makes things uh, a little bit easier. Uh, on the on the API request rather than sending everything at once. Okay, uh, so that's like how we create the index. So now what we're going to do is actually um, integrate that uh, a little bit in in our app. So let's switch back to our app here. Let's uh, view it. So first, let's just remove this. We don't need that. Okay, save will automatically reload. Um, so first thing we want to do here is let's initialize the Pinecone connection. So I'm going to just take, let's just take this part of the code, just copy it and then we'll remove what we don't need in a minute. Um, so we don't need, we do need sentence transformers uh, in a minute. We don't need data sets. Uh, we do need Pinecone. So Actually, here we're initializing our, our retriever model. It's the same as what we did before. So we do want to keep that in there. Let me make that bigger. Um, API key, again, just saw this somewhere else. Um, or if you are using uh, Streamlit Cloud, they have like a secrets management uh, system. And it's something we'll look at in the future for sure. Uh, but for now, I'm just putting it in here. So we have our API key environment. and we're just doing the same thing we did before, but actually we don't want to create an index. We're assuming we've already created an index if we're uh, in our app. So we're just going to connect to it. Okay. So with that, we've uh, kind of set up the, like the, the backend part of our app. I have smart part that's going to handle the open domain Q and A, but it's going to be a little bit slow. And we, we will have a look at how to sort of solve that. Uh, pretty soon. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is actually uh, just implement this and we're going to actually query and see what we what we return. So I'm going to save this. We won't see anything change in our app now other than the fact that it takes longer to load because it's uh, downloading the, um, the retriever model. That's the main part of the, uh, the slowness here. And then obviously connecting to Pinecone also takes a, a second as well. So for now, we're going to deal with how slow it is, um, but we will, we will fix that pretty soon. And uh, now what I actually want to do is I want to say, okay, if the query is not empty, because by default it is empty, that's why we've added that in there. So I'm going to actually remove this, enter. If it is not empty, so if query is not equal to nothing, we're going to, a query, a pinecone, 
uh, for whatever is in that query. So the first thing we need to do is create our context vector. So I'm gonna write XQ, just shorthand for context vector. Um, it's pretty standard, especially if you use Vice before, they tend to use this. And I say I said context vector, I meant query vector. Um, so we're going to do model and code. And we need to put this in square brackets and we have query. Okay, and then we're going to convert that to a list. Okay, so this is going to create our, our query vector. Let's write it down. Create query vector. Uh, and then the next thing we want to do is query pinecone with this query vector. Uh, so to do that, we want to write uh, first let's get relevant context. And we're going to sort these in XC, so like query, uh, like context vector, similar thing to the um, query vector that we used before with XQ. But this time we're going to write index.query, and we're going to pass XQ, so our, our query vector, and we're going to say how many results we want to return. Now, later on, we're going to use Streamlit a little like a slider bar to decide how many we would like to return. But for now, we will hard code it. And another thing that we want to include here is we want to tell Pinecone to return the metadata because by default, it will not return metadata. So return metadata equals true. So these are like the extra little bits that I mentioned before. So it included our uh, the title. So like uh, the, the topic, Wikipedia topic that the context is coming from, and also the text itself. Okay, so we're going to return the relevant context, and then we're gonna loop through each of those. Now, when we uh, do this, uh, there's a particular format that we need to follow. So our contexts are actually going to be stored. So for context, in XC results and results is going to return a list and we just want the the first item in that list so the reason it returns a list is because if you are uh, querying Pinecone with multiple queries it will return a list of you know your answers um, for each query but in this case we are only ever going to query with one uh, query vector so we always enter uh, position zero here and then in there we will have uh, all of our uh, returned matches inside this matches um, key value value so for context in there all we're going to do is write st dot write context and then we want to go into the metadata that we were returning and uh, we have title and text here. We don't want title, we want text. Okay, so let's save that and check that it actually works. So again, this is going to take a little while to load because we're um, initializing like the full pipeline with our vector database and the retrieval model. So every time we run this, it's downloading the full retrieval model, which takes quite a bit of time. Okay, so this is just rerun our app. And now we can say, uh, who are the Normans? Okay, again, it's going to reload everything, so it's gonna take a while. We're going to fix this in the next video. So we should be returning five contexts, and if we scroll down, we can see we have these five paragraphs. Now, each one of these paragraphs is a single uh, context. So we could, maybe we can inspect the element. Okay, so we can see and down here, it's pretty horrific to look at actually. So if I uh, zoom up, we can see each one of these is a single, um, a single one of our contexts, right? These here, cool. So I think that is, that's it for this uh, video. So we're now we have these backend uh, working. And the next one, what we'll do is 
fix this issue with it taking forever to load reload everything every time uh, which is actually super easy um, but will make a big difference to our app so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one